Hey, here's a first. Uh, never before has any country in battle shot out of the sky a uh, a ballistic missile outside of the atmosphere. Apparently, the Houthis launched from Yemen a missile that flew a thousand miles over the Arabian Peninsula on the way to its target. It left uh, our atmosphere, was in space, and Israel used its aero missile defense system to shoot down a ballistic missile outside of Earth's atmosphere, believed to be the first combat ever to take place in space. Oh, that's good. Uh. So who, it, whoever had first battle in space, the Houthis versus Israel, you're a winner. Come claim your prize. Star Wars has begun. Who knew? Uh, that would be a very, but the odds on that would be very high. I feel like Houthis would not be the top of the list of that particular equation, but there you go. Yemen's Houthis also released footage purporting to show the missile being launched as part of a barrage of drones and other long-range weapons aimed at Israeli towns and cities. Can I ask you, um, the Houthis, mm-hmm. um, what is their main source of income there i mean what is it that they produce that allows them to have a defense industry that is working on ballistic missile systems uh i'm just i'm i'm only i i mean i know what the houthis do for a living you know that big business in yemen which is um oil and gas oil and gas yeah (laughs) their oil and gas uh, income from oil production constitutes 70 to 75 percent of government rent uh, revenue and 90 percent of exports. Mm-hmm. So okay. that's the, 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 that's not necessarily specific to the Houthis, but it's specific to Yemen. Yeah. Okay. But the Houthis are rebels, right? I mean, I, I think thought. the Houthis are rebels. <laughs> I mean, I just keep seeing like that's... these sand scenes from Star Wars. You know, with the animals that go, and, you know, they're riding on the back. That's how I'm I'm picturing now, and I know that's very ignorant of me. But I have a feeling has been heard somewhere in the Houthi range at some point. I mean, uh, yes, they're rebels. I mean, but I don't, that's where they... You have to think they're coming. It's funding from inside the country still. Yeah. yeah right. And yeah, that, sure. that funding or, comes. Or maybe Iran. 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 Now, mm. if Iran, if, if the Houthis have a ballistic missile and they're getting maybe technology, I don't know. I'm sure the Houthis have a unbelievable scientific community. Great IT department. Uh, sure. At, at the Houthis. Sure, sure. Uh, and, uh, and, and so if the Houthis have it, I, I would imagine the Iranians could put a ballistic missile <clears throat> into the sky and they one would believe yes. also have a, uh, you know, a nuke. Uh, well, not, uh, not confirmed, right? Well, I don't know. I remember reading about a year ago that they were like 20 days away from, being able to yeah being uh, able to to right. build it and you know so that was about a year ago yeah. i mean i'm sure they if they don't have it today they don't they'll have it soon i'm sure and yeah. they also can also get them from places like north korea yeah or probably yeah. china or yeah. russia yeah so that's good so we got that mm-hmm. uh we got that going for you um now um in uh, just a personal uh note you know the pro palestinian supporters that were swarming outside the white house chanting allah akbar you know, something that I, I just love, especially this time of year, to hear the chants of Allah Akbar ring through the streets, you know, uh, and uh, it's beautiful off those American maples. Oh, it's mm. so beautiful. So anyway, um, you know, as they were trying to uh, take down the gates of the White House, uh, and then they went to the back gate or the side gate of the White House, and they had these two big, you know, white columns, 
and then the gates that actually open up. Um, and they they took red paint and everybody dipped their hands in red paint and then put that red paint on the two columns on each side. Um, now, that happened Saturday night. Now, I've seen a picture of it, which I would assume was Sunday because it was daylight. Was it the union rules that stopped the White House from having that painted at 2 o'clock in the morning? Why would you leave bloody hand prints all over the gates of the White House? You get somebody with a gallon of white paint and you paint that at 2 o'clock in the morning. Or are they union rules? I, I don't know. Maybe union would just, uh, you're not going to get a union guy to do that. Okay, I would have volunteered. It's the Biden White House. I'm not a fan. I would have volunteered to take the bloody handprints off of the gates of the White House. What the hell is wrong with these people? You'd think at least someone gets out there with a power washer and gives it a go. I mean, the whole point, think about every, this is symbolism, right? Oh, yeah. It's symbolism. Yeah. The, the fact that they were out there shaking the fences of the White House grounds. I, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Honestly. Is that a question you want an answer to? Because, uh, I don't <laughs> no, think, I don't. I think no, America, I... You know, look, it's it's fascinating to watch because you, you mentioned, let me go back to your comments um, last hour on what you would do if you were a leftist, activist, extremist type looking sure. to create chaos. Sure. You empower a movement like the pro-Hamas movement that is apparently alive and well in this country to go out there and uh, shake the the fences of the White House. Let's just say, and this has happened many times, um, protests like that spiral out of control, right? Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I mean, you'd argue, some people would say that's what happened on January 6th. People mm -hmm. were very upset. You know, they didn't plan on going into the mm -hmm. Capitol, but it, but it did. Mm -hmm. um, Black Lives Matter rallies. Maybe they, you know, some. we all know there were some people who were there who were looking to burn down buildings. Many, though. We're just pissed off about what happened mm -hmm. and then got involved, got mm -hmm. fired up. Things mm -hmm. spiraled out of control. Mm -hmm. If something like that happens at the White House, if they rush the White House, right? It, let's just say They'd you be got shot. They would be shot, but it, there might be thousands of them. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And they would be shot. They, I, I hope we still have a Secret Service who would shoot a bunch of people who tried to rush the White, uh, White House and kill the president. I hope that still exists um, because it, that's the way it should be. But... What, what's going to happen in that situation is the American people, I think, even with their distaste for this particular president, would support rally, would rally behind him, number one, at some level. And number two, would support somewhat draconian steps to make sure that does not happen again. Oh, yeah. You'd lose your freedom to protest in the streets, you I think. Go back to, you know, I hate to bring up the Nazis because that's what, I, but I, I, you got to do it uh, 46 times per episode on the Glenn Beck program. We're con contractually obligated to do so. And if you go back to the Nazis, like, remember, how did Hitler really claim to take that mantle that he had to take power? It was, it was the Reichstag it, fire. It was the Reichstag fire. And it was... Uh, you know, the the groups under him that initially supported Hitler that came along and started doing terrible things. And he said, I have to, I have to step up. I have to do something here. I have to, I have to expel these groups that are break. I have to break well, the constitution because of what they're doing. I, People on supposedly is, this, his side. This is top down, bottom up, inside out. This is exactly what I've been warning about since 2008. You empower the people on the streets. They're useful idiots. Mm. You allow them to create chaos. And then when the people cry out and say enough is enough, then the government comes down with draconian measures to crush them first, but crush everyone else as well. Mm. So they'll take control. That is, that's, that's the plan of leftists, top down, bottom up, inside out. That's what it is. You know, the other thing on it is uh, <laughs> the Bubba effect. We have a terrorist 
uh, problem in this country, if they, God forbid, do something like, I don't even want to say it, they do something uh, that has been done before in this country, people will lose their mind. And do you think the federal government is going to, the one who just said, you know, hey, we care about Islamophobia over uh, anti-Semitism. Do you think those people who opened up our border are going to have any credibility? Any credibility. Any authority. This is what the military had been planning for. I've been telling you that since 2008, too. Called the Bubba effect. And we are prime for all of those things. That's why we just have to get down on our knees and pray. Because this is going to take a miracle that only the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob could pull off. It is. And um, we, we've, got to st- we've got to stop putting our faith in men and start putting our faith in God again. Let's do everything we can to win the election. Let's do everything we can to make sure that we are stable in our own lives. But uh, I'd get down on your knees and pray. Because God is the only answer to this particular problem, I believe.